Death is as common as any other function of the human body, though we still try to avoid talking about it. It's mostly because we don't quite understand it, though philosophical discussions aside, scientifically speaking, death is a pretty straightforward phenomenon. It's what happens when living cells age to the point that they can no longer stay alive, and it happens to every living thing that exists. Despite being so widespread, there are still many misconceptions and myths surrounding death that most of us believe. Everything from old wives' tales to popular movies suggests that we have a very vague understanding of what can and cannot kill us. It makes sense to an extent, as it's still a subject most people don't like to discuss. It's a problem, though, when some of those myths cause actual problems in real-life situations. If it weren't for some of these myths, we'd have a much better understanding of how to deal with accidents and other unforeseen events. Number 10. Starting a fire in a cave will get you killed. We're not sure if it's because of war movies involving guerrilla warfare or an intuitive, though inaccurate, sense of disaster management, but too many of us think that starting a fire in a cave in desperate situations is a good idea. Forget desperate situations, it doesn't sound like a bad place to have a party either. Fires in caves make for a cozy setting in our heads, as movies have told us that this is the case. As anyone who's actually done this would tell you, though, it's actually a pretty bad idea. When you're in a hole made up of lots of rocks stacked together on top of you and held together by years of geological balancing, it's a good idea not to do anything to move them. A fire would immediately start heating up and expanding the space around it, and if you do it for a long enough duration, it could even dislodge the rocks. That's why adventure enthusiasts know that a cave is the worst place to start a fire in almost all circumstances, unless you're lost in a huge cave and there's no other place. Stories of people sitting around a fire in a cave make for good fairy tales and war films, though it's one of those things that should probably stay in fiction. Number 9. Lost in the desert? Look for shade instead of water. Survival shows insist that the first thing you have to do if you're lost in a desert is look for a source of water. After all, lack of hydration will kill you much faster than a lack of food. Going out to hunt for water seems like a logical and rather straightforward plan, as you've read about lush oases and heroic stories of survival in the desert before. While it's 100% accurate that preserving water is a priority if you're stuck in a desert, looking for a water source all the time is not the way to do it and may even prove to be fatal. Moving at all during the day would deplete your water sources very quickly. Experts agree that the first thing you need to do if you're alone in a desert without resources is finding shade from the sun and preserving the considerable water resources that your body has. Going out to find water and supplies and possibly civilization is a good idea once the sun is down, but again, make sure you don't venture too far because… Number 8. If you can't find your way back, stay put. People have wildly varying pieces of advice on what to do if you're ever lost in the wilderness, which surprisingly still happens a lot. From stay calm to why would you go there in the first place? It depends on who you ask, but it's generally agreed that taking measures to not get lost in the first place is, in fact, sound advice. Regardless, many people still find themselves in that situation due to a lack of accessibility and connectivity in vast regions of the planet. Once you're lost, things could go very wrong depending on where you are, though there are still ways to get out of it alive. What you shouldn't do, however, is go out and try to find help. Most experts agree that if you're ever lost and looking for a way out, the worst thing you can do is move around a lot, something popular wisdom suggests is a good idea. While some travelers would tell you to follow the water source, survival experts maintain that the best thing to do is staying put, as it's much more likely for help to reach you that way. Of course, if no one's come and it's been a few days and you're sure that you're alone, following a water body is the best course of action. In most cases, though, help does arrive long before it comes to that. Number 7. A gunshot to the arm or leg can easily kill you. We can't entirely blame the movies for myths around guns, as thanks to America's ongoing debate and abundance of firearms, there are plenty of real-life myths to go around. The most widely held one, though, must be the one about shooting someone in an arm or a leg as a warning shot. It's assumed that it's no big deal to shoot the limbs, and it could be done for fun, just like in the movies, as the real damage is when you shoot the main organs. In reality, the chances of dying from a gunshot wound to the arm are as high as many other parts of the body, unless you get it right in your lungs. Many deaths on the battlefield occur due to bleeding out and delayed medical care instead of wounds to vital organs. Medical professionals understand that gunshots could be dangerous 
place, regardless of their placement on the body, as a punctured jugular vein is fatal, whether it's in the arm or in the neck. Number 6. Waking a sleepwalker can't kill them Sleepwalking has fascinated us for as long as we can remember. It's not exactly a disorder, and could be understood as an overly active dream rather than anything else. Yet, we know little about the exact mechanisms that cause it. Many myths around sleepwalking and sleepwalkers have carried over the centuries, and different cultures attribute different meaning towards it. Regardless of where you are, though, waking up a sleepwalker is considered to be bad for their brain almost everywhere. Quite a few of us believe that it may even rewire their brain and kill them. In reality, waking someone up from sleepwalking will, at most, wake them up with a start, as it's quite surprising to wake up standing in the middle of doing something that you're not supposed to be doing while asleep. In fact, waking them may keep them from doing something unsafe and hurting themselves or others, though none of the effects involve any harm whatsoever. Number 5. Lethal injection is hardly painless The political debate around capital punishment has largely died down, especially in the developed world. Many countries have abolished the death penalty, or have it on paper, but haven't used it in practice for a while. The United States is unique in the way that it still has the death penalty in many states. Even if the federal government hasn't executed anyone for a while, the states still regularly do so. No matter where you stand on the debate, the fact is that lethal injection, usually claimed to be a painless method of execution, is not painless at all, and this is concerning. Many death row inmates have suffered horribly at the hands of the executioner due to botched executions, as there has been little research on what the contents of the injection do to the human body. Many experts compare it to any of the other painful execution methods from history, like the gas chamber. Number 4. No body part continues to function after death Different variations of this myth exist depending on who you ask. It's widely believed that some parts of the body remain functional even after death, which is backed up by fictional science in movies. Some say that it's the heart, others claim that parts like the nails and hair keep on growing, and others yet claim that you could still blink for several hours after dying. We're not sure if it's due to the inherent human need to deny the finality of death, but we're sorry to report that nothing in your body is gonna work after you die. Sure, some types of cells take several minutes to die out, but they're not doing anything other than dying in that time. Number 3. Ingesting chewing gum can't kill birds and very rarely kills humans. The impact of chewing gums on the environment keeps coming up in the news cycle, even though there's no research to prove it. Chewing gum has rarely been proven to do much more harm than any other product we use frequently, and yet they're seen as a big environmental hazard almost everywhere in the world. One factoid that keeps getting repeated is that chewing gum could get stuck in the throats of birds and kill them, doing further damage to the ecosystem. In reality, there have been no reports of birds dying from chewing gum, mostly due to the obvious fact that discarded gums don't look anything like bird food. Moreover, ingesting gum is highly unlikely to kill most living things, even people, as it's not difficult to pass through the digestive system. While people have certainly found ways to die from chewing gum in some rare cases, there were other additional reasons that caused death rather than just choking on it. The belief about chewing gum staying in your system seven years after ingestion, well, that's also a myth. All of this, though, doesn't mean you should just throw your chewing gum on the ground. It's still a nightmare to clear up. Number 2. Breast cancer doesn't just kill women Breast cancer affects a lot of women around the world and is one of the deadliest and most common types of cancer in most countries. What's relatively less well known, however, is the rate of breast cancer among men. Quite a few people think that breast cancer could only affect women, though that's not actually the case. Even if it's way less common, it's still a real problem. Every year, around 50 men die because of the disease. Alarmingly, the number of fatalities among affected men has been on the rise in recent years. It has now surpassed fatality rates among women. The number of cases is rising at a faster rate too, though we don't quite understand why that is either. Number 1. You can't die from expired medicine Expired medicine in most households is treated as literal poison, no matter how recent the expiration date was. And that date is assumed to be definite and unwavering. You might even think that the pill has some sort of hidden switch to make it not work and turn toxic immediately after the date passes. In cases of stronger types of medicine for more serious diseases, expired medicine is even assumed to be fatal. 
As it turns out, the expiry date is less of a precise time that the medication will go bad and more of a general guideline on how long it will stay effective for. While certain medicines have been found to lose effectiveness after their expiry dates like aspirin, most of them stay effective well beyond it. And no, expired medicine isn't dangerous at all and it can do little to no harm even after it's expired. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We got brand new videos every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out another channel I do called Geographics. It's a geography-based channel, obviously. I'm linking to that below. Thank you for watching.